Hello. Thanks for coming. Or should I say, thanks for clicking. <laughs> Today, we'll be watching a video on how to derive the natural log function, the first in our flipped classroom series. A very exciting event. Let me give you a little bit of advice as to how to go about using these videos effectively. Each evening you will watch the videos and my best suggestion for you is I'll be posing problems like I normally would do in class. Okay? Your best bet would be after I pose the problem, if you understand the concept, push pause on your YouTube device. Then do the problem yourself. After that, you can see how I work it out or just skip to the answer. If you got it right, great. Go on to the next one. If not, you can go back and follow along with the explanation. So let's begin our first exciting video. This is a Narculus production of the derivative of the natural log function. Let's sit back, grab some popcorn, and enjoy. The first thing we're going to do is to derive the natural log function. This is a rule that we will prove in uh, section 7.7, 7, but we haven't gotten there yet. So for now, okay, there's an easy way to prove it, but we've got to get to section 7.7 7, or 7, 7 before we do that. So for now, we're going to have to take my word for it that you know the derivative rule. All the other rules we can prove based on this rule. So the derivative of the natural log function is 1 over x times the derivative of the argument of the log. That's the chain rule part of the derivative for natural log x. So to derive the natural log of x, you're going to write 1 over the argument of the log times the derivative of that argument. There's your chain rule part. All right? So let's get this show on the road, and let's do some problems. This is going to be exciting. So first up, I want you to write the equation of the tangent line. for y equals ln 2x squared plus 1 at the point x equals 1. So we start with, here's our function. You should remember that to write the equation of the tangent line, you need two things. You need a point and you need a slope. To find the slope, you've got to find the derivative. So we're going to derive the natural log of 2x squared plus 1. Here we go. It's actually very simple. The derivative of the natural log of 2x squared plus 1 is 1 over the argument of the log times, use the chain rule, on the argument of the log. So that's going to give you, uh, the chain rule part gives you a 4x. So you have 4x over 2x squared plus 1. Now, that equation represents the slope of the tangent line. You want the slope of the tangent line at x equals 1. Just take 1, plug it in. So the slope of the tangent line will be 4 times 1 over 2 times 1 squared plus 1, which gives you 4 over 3, which is 4 thirds. You got a slope. You need a point. To get a point, take 1, plug it in. So you got the natural log of 2 times 1 squared plus 1. Y equals the natural log of 3. So you have a point at 1 comma ln 3. You got a point. You got a slope. You got a line y minus ln 3 equals 4 thirds, x minus 1. And you're done. Okay? Very simple. The derivative is very simple. It's not a complicated rule. And let's keep going. We're going to practice a few problems. We're going to do some applications that you learned back in chapter 3 as well. And we're going to look at those also. So, what if I gave you and I asked you to derive y equals the secant of the natural log of x. Well, this isn't the natural log of something. It's the secant of something, right? It's secant blah. So to derive secant blah, the derivative of secant is secant blah tan blah times, cross this out, and then derive your ln x. 
Okay, the derivative of ln x, just rewrite what we have here so far. And ln x times the derivative of ln x is 1 over the argument of the log times the derivative of the argument, but the derivative of x is 1. So our final answer, we will have secant ln x tangent ln x all over x. And that's it. Okay? Hopefully you're two for two. You should be doing these as we're going along. If you're not doing them as we're going along and you're just watching the video, not trying the problems first, I'll know. Okay? I'll know. I'm watching you now to see if you're doing it. All right, let's keep going. So we have <clears throat> y equals the natural log of x to the fifth. <coughs> uh, excuse me. I have a cough. So you want to derive the natural log of x to the fifth. Okay, there's two ways you can actually do this. One way is to just do it and use the rule. Okay, with the rule, so the derivative of the natural log of blah, or the natural log of x to the fifth, is 1 over the argument of the log times, use the chain rule on the argument. So you're going to have to derive x to the fifth. So that's going to give you 1 over x to the fifth times 5x to the fourth. Now you can clean that up, 5x to the fourth over x to the fifth, which will give you 5 over x. All right, you're all set. Now there's another way to do the same problem. You can use the properties to help you. You can use the properties to your advantage. So you can take y equals ln x to the fifth, and the property allows you to take the power and put it in the front. So you can write 5 times ln x. Now to derive 5 ln x, the derivative is, leave the 5 out of it, the derivative of ln x is 1 over x times, the derivative of the argument is a 1, and you get 5 over x just the same. Okay. Either way you can do it, I don't have a problem, you pick which way is easier for you. Now you can use the properties to your advantage if you have something that the properties can be used for. Alright, now let's take this problem that's here and we're going to change it slightly. Okay, we're going to change it and all we are going to do is we are going to take the natural log of x and put it in parentheses. Now, this is the whole argument, the natural log of x, the entire thing that's being raised to the fifth. So you cannot take the 5 and put it in the front. That's not a property of logs. Okay? The 5 would have to be inside the argument for it to go in the front of the log. All right? It is not. So to derive the whole quantity natural log of x to the fifth, this is no longer just a natural log problem. This is now something raised to the fifth. So it's blah to the fifth. The derivative of blah to the fifth, blah, technical term is 5, leave the blah, take 1 from the power, cross this out, times, you need to derive the natural log of x. The derivative of ln x is 1 over x. So you have 5 times ln x to the 4th times 1 over x. Clean it up, 5 ln x to the 4th over x. And you're done. All right? So far, so good. I know I'm going pretty quickly through these, but again, these are all things that you already understand about derivatives. It's just that I introduced this new rule that you did not know previously. All right. I'm not sure how close I am to you. I am really close to this camera, so I may actually be really close to you. I'll find out later when I actually go and try to uh, download this to my computer. So that'll be an exciting moment. All right, <clears throat> let's get this show moving here. Let's try to find y equals the natural log of the third root of x minus 1 over x plus 1. Okay, I want you to derive this. Now, there are a couple of ways that you can do this one as well. You see this is the natural log of something. Its derivative would be 1 over the something, which is this times, the only issue is, you would then have to derive the argument of the log, which is x minus 1 over x plus 1 to the 1 third power. So now, you would be stuck using the power rule, 
And then you would have to use the quotient rule on what's inside. So that is quite a lot of work. However, here is a place where the properties that you learned back in pre-calc and algebra 2 can be used to your advantage. Because you can take this and you can expand it. And expanding something, okay, especially in calculus, can be to your advantage. This would be one third of the natural log of x minus 1 over x plus 1. Okay? And again, I'm not deriving this, I'm just pulling it apart. Something that you learned back in pre-calc, right, we reviewed uh, last week. Okay? Or this week, depending on when you're watching the video, I don't know. Alright, so now you have one-third ln x minus 1 minus ln x plus 1. Now the advantage to this is, what you've done by expanding it when you pull it apart, is you create natural logs that are all added and subtracted. And addition and subtraction in derivative land is actually great because you can do them all separately. All right? You will have to put them all back together at the end with the guidelines. Remember those guidelines back from chapter 2? No, really, do you remember them? I hope you do. Okay? But we can derive this very simply. So we can leave the one-third out of the whole thing. And we can derive the natural log of x minus 1. We'll get 1 over x minus 1 times, use the chain rule on x minus 1, its derivative is 1. Minus, derive ln x plus 1, its derivative is 1 over x plus 1 times 1 with the chain rule. And now all we have to do is put it back together. We need a common denominator, but it's a lot easier than remember about a minute and a half ago, we were worried about using the quotient rule on that. And that was a disaster. So the derivative then with respect to x is leave the one-third there. Common denominator is x minus 1 times x plus 1. The first term needs an x plus 1. And the second one needs an x minus 1. So we'll have one-third uh, x minus 1. I am right in front of probably all of this. But I don't know how low I can go on this thing so that you can still see it. So I'm trying to test my luck here. Uh, you get two. There's two up there, and you're all set. Here's your final answer. All right? Okay, so again, you can use the properties to your advantage to make your life easier. All right. You can use the properties to your advantage. Okay. Let's try to do a little something different. Let's try to find some relative extrema, because everybody loves relative extrema. Um, I'm going to get rid of this also, this natural log rule up here, because I think it'll give me more room. Well, it'll definitely give me more room, because I can write relative extrema up here. Look at that. For y equals ln x over x. And here we go. How do I derive y equals ln x over x? Well, before I do that, how do I find relative extrema? Find relative extrema. You should be answering that question right now to me. I hear whether or not you're answering, so you better answer. Okay. So, to find relative extrema, you find the derivative, set it equal to zero, find the critical points, and then you make your chart. So let's do it. You're going to have to find the derivative of that. This is something over something. We need to use the quotient rule. So the derivative with respect to x is ho d high minus i d ho over America's favorite snack tree, the ho ho. Okay, so the denominator is going to be an x squared. In the numerator, you have x times the derivative of ln x is 1 over x minus leave the ln x and the derivative of x is a 1. So that'll give me 1 minus ln x over x squared. We need to find the critical points. Set this equal to zero to find the critical points. Set the top to zero. And set the bottom to zero. I'll help you out. The bottom is zero. Or this guy is zero. Um, over here, now you can see why we had you solve these the other day. You get 1 equals ln x. So 1 equals log base e of x. So if you flip over to exponential, you get e to the 1 equals x. So x equals e. Okay. So you have two potential critical points, one at 0, one at e. So now you're going to have to make a chart. 
So we got 0, we got E, okay? Um, we're going to go from 0 to E, and then from E to infinity. Then we have negative infinity to 0 up here. I want to know about F prime so I can figure out stuff about F. Um, I'm going to ignore this region completely. Tomorrow you will tell me why. Okay, tomorrow you will tell me why I will ask you the question, and I expect you to know why I ignored that uh, area up there. Um, I'm going to pick a point in here between 0 and E. Okay, uh, and it goes in here. Remember, it goes into your derivative. All right, it goes into your derivative. You want to test F prime so you can figure out stuff about F. Okay, so I figured out that that's going to be bigger than 0 there, so this is increasing. And then I'm going to pick a point to the right of E. Now remember, you don't have a calculator to use. Okay? So I want to know what point you would plug in from here, from E to infinity, without a calculator, to figure out what the sign of this answer is going to be. I know the answer is going to be a negative down there, but I'm not going to tell you what point I plugged in. Tomorrow I'll want to know which point you picked. All right? So from E to infinity, you get a negative there. At E, it changes from increasing to decreasing. That means E, I'm going to do it over here, X equals E is a relative max. Okay, so there's a max at E comma. Now it goes back in upstairs. So you've got to plug it back in the original. Y equals ln E over E. So you get 1 over E. E comma 1 over E. That's a lot of E's. All right? Again, all this stuff you've already learned. It's just going back through it again with the fact that you have some new rules that you can work with. Okay, so we have one last thing to talk about here for today. I know you're disappointed that this is going to be our last example, but we are going to talk about um, a technique called log differentiation. Log differentiation. Okay. It involves taking the log, or natural log, of both sides of an equation. To derive the equation. Okay. For example, if I gave you y is equal to the square root of x minus 1 times x plus 2. This is similar to the one we did earlier. Now you can see how you can derive this, right? This is just a problem that you learned back in chapter 2. This is x minus 1 times x plus 2 to the half. Yeah, you use the power rule, then you use the product rule on it. However, you may also recognize that, hey, if there was a natural log in front of here, you could pull it all apart. Well, there can be a natural log in front of here, as long as you put a natural log on both sides. So if we take the natural log on both sides, it allows us now to use the properties on the right okay, to pull that thing apart. So now the natural log of y is equal to 1 half the natural log of x minus 1 times x plus 2. And again, we're using the properties here. We're not deriving this yet. We're just using properties on it that you learned back in pre-calculus. So ln y is equal to 1 half um, ln x minus 1 times oops, plus ln x plus 2. And now you can derive it. The only issue with deriving it is you once earlier had a function that was explicit, okay? meaning it was y in terms of x. However, now you no longer have that. y is now stuck inside the function. So you're going to have to derive this guy with y stuck inside the function. And how do we derive an equation if y is stuck inside the function? We don't call it explicit. We call it implicit. So this is now, you've created for yourself an implicit equation. So you're going to have to derive it implicitly. Remember, that means you derive term by term. Whenever you derive y, you need a dy dx. 
Okay, you need to multiply by dy dx. So the derivative of ln y is 1 over y times your i of the y term, you need a dy dx. Equals, leave the half there. Derivative of ln x minus 1 is 1 over x minus 1 times 1 with the chain rule. Okay, remember the 1 comes from the derivative of the argument of the log. The derivative of ln x plus 2 is 1 over x plus 2 times 1 with the chain rule. And then you're going to have to clean this up. I'm going to switch over here in just a second to the other side. I know, very exciting. Um, but we also have to solve this for dy dx. So I'm going to uh, find a common denominator over here, and then I'll clean up what's left. So we have, whoa, how do I look from this side? So we have 1 over y dy dx is equal to, the common denominator is uh, x minus 1 times x plus 2. So the first term needs an x plus 2. The second term needs an x minus 1. So we have 1 over y dy dx is equal to 1, or not 1. The whole thing is over 2 x minus 1 times x plus 2. And that's going to be a 2x plus 1 in the numerator there. But I need to solve for dy dx, so I'm going to have to multiply both sides by y to do that. So dy dx is equal to 2x plus 1 over 2x minus 1 times x plus 2 times y. But y is equal to this guy. So dy dx is really 2x plus 1 over 2x minus 1 x plus 2 times the square root of x minus 1 x plus 2. Now I'm going to take one more step, and tomorrow you're going to explain to me where I got it. Okay, I have a 2x plus 1 over, leave the 2 underneath, and I'm going to write the final answer is the square root here of x minus 1 times x plus 2. This is the final answer. This is the correct answer by the guidelines. Tomorrow I want to know where it came from. Hopefully you tried this one and you got it right. Hopefully you tried them all and you got it right. And what I hope for the most is you really enjoyed this Narculus production of the derivative of the natural log. Have a great day.